This is Radio Moscow, and here is the news. The first artificial Earth satellite in the world was today successfully launched in the USSR. It is even bigger than Columbus' discovery of the America. Why and how did the Russians beat us to the draw? Sputnik was a wake-up call for the United States. We had better get on our toes. The course of United States policies in the competition with Russia has been severely shaken. With the conclusion of the Second World War, American spirits were flying high having just won a decisive victory. The American economy was producing the highest standard of living in the world and the people were confident that they had the best educated population. However, a new competition based on ideological supremacy was on the horizon, the Cold War between the United States and the Soviet Union. The U.S. strategically placed missile batteries and air bases within range of the USSR, fearing a communist domination of Eurasia. Khrushchev, who have no retaliation capability at that time, the ICBM was only one possible answer to secure the country. And I think it was very correct answer. After that, it was very different uh, period in the Cold War. The 1953 detonation of the Soviet hydrogen bomb accelerated both countries' ICBM programs, relying on advanced Nazi rocketry and scientists captured during the war. Meanwhile, the International Council of Scientific Unions announced that July 1957 to December 1958 would be recognized as the International Geophysical Year, or IGY, to encourage worldwide scientific collaboration. President Eisenhower publicized plans to launch a satellite for the United States' participation in the IGY, supporting the civilian Project Vanguard rather than the experienced Army team led by German engineer Werner von Braun. Hearing the United States' plans, Premier Nikita Khrushchev directed lead Soviet engineer Sergei Korolov to modify the R-7 ICBM into a launch vehicle and construct a simple satellite named Sputnik. On October 4, 1957, at 7.28 p.m., the R-7 carrying a shiny 23-inch aluminum sphere lifted off, the first man-made object to breach the confines of our atmosphere. America watched in awe as Sputnik orbited over the Earth, purposely passing over large American cities. Media outlets went into a frenzy, leading the American people to question their previously perceived supremacy. In response, Eisenhower attempted to quell the public's fears, receiving harsh criticism from those who demanded action. Our satellite program has never been conducted as a race with other nations. Rather, it has been carefully scheduled as part of the scientific work of the International Geophysical Year. This government needs to start telling the truth to the American people. Quit kidding ourselves and quit trying to fool uh, our friends and our neighbors. And by that I mean, uh, let's find out just where we stand in this race and this armament picture, and let's find out just what we're going to do about it. Let's quit acting as if nothing happened, because something has happened, and it has embarrassed us throughout the world. Panic continued, and the lack of confidence was reflected in the 14% drop in the Dow Jones that month a significant turn from the soaring economy that characterized the post-war years. The situation became aggravated as Americans saw their standing on the international arena begin to slip. Throughout the Cold War, the United States and the Soviet Union were, were in competition with one another to win the hearts and minds of the non-aligned world. And sending Sputnik into orbit was a huge uh, shift, marked a huge shift in favor of of the USSR and against the United States. The November 1st launch of the dog Laika aboard Sputnik 2 proved the Soviets' capability to deliver a large nuclear payload, heightening the paranoia of the American people. Capitalizing on their newly established standing, the Soviet government produced an outpour of propaganda, instilling pride into communist ideals. From Karolov to Khrushchev and ordinary people, it was great achievement. One among many other great achievements in the new Soviet history. Adding insult to injury for the United States, Project Vanguard failed to send an American satellite into space when the TV-3 rocket exploded three feet above the launch pad on December 6, 1957. In order to redeem themselves, President Eisenhower reinstated von Braun's team, 
which successfully launched the Explorer 1 satellite on January 31, 1958. Despite the quick four-month response, Americans remained apprehensive, realizing that behind the missile gap lay a technology gap, and behind that an education gap. Fearing that the U.S. was falling behind in missile production, the government prioritized nuclear weaponry, increasing its ICBM production fivefold in just three years. Continuing the Cold War mentality of one-upmanship, the Soviets poured funds into producing as many ICBMs as possible, a tactic which eventually contributed to the fall of the Soviet Union. Within a decade, there were enough nuclear warheads between the two superpowers to destroy the world. This arms buildup would significantly alter the social climate in the United States as nuclear strike drills became common occurrences and the government invested in the defense and early warning system as a first line of protection. To avoid future surprises, the government endorsed the Advanced Research Projects Agency, or ARPA, in 1958, eventually becoming DARPA with an emphasis on defense, to foster advanced technologies and systems, creating revolutionary advantages for the U.S. military. With a new national commitment to basic research and development programs, the National Science Foundation and National Labs received unprecedented budget increases of more than $3 billion within a decade. This large-scale funding to both defense and civilian research programs propelled the United States into the information age. Dedicated to a peaceful pursuit in space, Eisenhower consolidated the existing space exploration programs under the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, or NASA, on July 29, 1958, declaring that all aeronautical and space activities sponsored by the United States shall be directed by a civilian agency. With the launch of Sputnik, America felt the need to close the educational gap with the Soviet Union, a stark contrast to the widely held preconception that the Soviets were a backwards people. Though previously opposed to federal involvement in education, both Republicans and Democrats understood the need for reform and passed the National Defense Education Act on September 2, 1958, forever changing the federal government's role in education. You might say this was the first awakening to what we today call STEM subjects, the trigger for a federal education program, and we had not had many of them previously. The NDEA provided the means for thousands to pursue college degrees, profoundly impacting the educational trajectory of the baby boomer generation. The path of Sputnik established the precedent of a space without national borders, similar to the open skies policy suggested by Eisenhower but rejected by Khrushchev in 1955. When Sputnik goes up, this is now flying over American territory as well as territory of other countries on Earth. Ike had wanted to propose a follow-on to open skies known as freedom of space. The Russians had just done the job for him. This concept transformed the nature of reconnaissance during the Cold War and has since allowed for 60 countries to put up satellites. Currently, there are over 8,000 satellites in orbit, including communication, weather, geolocation, and espionage orbiters, enabling new innovations like the global positioning system, cellular phones, and weather forecasts. Scientists now have the ability to ascertain the water levels in an African basin and determine when and where a hurricane will make landfall. In the final analysis, Sputnik's three-week journey was more than just an astounding scientific achievement. At the crossroads of the industrial and information revolutions, it changed the direction of the Cold War, opening a new means of competition based on scientific ingenuity rather than military might. The launch forced the American people to reevaluate their previously perceived standing on the world stage and was their first major psychological crisis. In response, the government took action to bridge the apparent gap, funding billions to programs which would ensure America's technological superiority. Across the aisle, politicians came to a consensus enacting new education policies that marked a significant shift in the role of the federal government in public education. Sputnik set a new precedent regarding the freedom of space fostering a collaborative spirit and further enabling new technologies and discoveries, many of which are taken for granted today. Ultimately, Sputnik ignited a space race that contributed to the first steps on the moon and culminated in the unprecedented cooperation now seen on the International Space Station. Despite the initial panic, Sputnik left in its wake a legacy of progress and a rejuvenation of the innovative spirit, opening up the final frontier for endless exploration.